Aloha all, this is Samana with Unconventional Insights and I have my first guest helping me with this podcast today and I'm going to introduce him in a moment. We are doing a workshop together in Austin in October for four weeks for relationship work and this is David Garrison. Welcome to my podcast, David. Thank you, Samana. (laughs) I'd like you to tell everybody a little bit about yourself professionally and what types of works you've been involved with. You bet. So (laughs) uh, most of my career has been in management and consulting in the software industry. Um, I also had some short stints in education. I taught in high school and college, and I also did some counseling. Um, I have a master's in counseling. Um, the last two or three years, I was able to step away from the uh, pursuit of a lot of money to focus more on my personal interest and things that are more fulfilling for me. Um, so I've been, I've been lately involved in delivering workshops around uh, communication, emotional intelligence. Uh, I'm going to do a workshop with you on building uh, your ideal relationship. And I've also done leadership workshops. Wonderful. That's great. Yeah. And and what brought you to Austin because of the whole tech thing? Or I think I remembered a story you said that was the final peak of what brought you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was in college back in the 80s, and I went to Barton Springs, and I, uh, I was from southern Louisiana. And uh, I walked in Barton Springs and discovered myself amongst a crowd of uh, pot smokers out in public, which was unheard of for me. (laughs) And then I walked around a little bit more and I noticed that um, clothing was a lot more optional in Austin, at least at Barton Springs, than I knew was possible. And uh, that that, uh, gave me the the, uh, hint that people were more free in Austin than I had experienced, and that that uh, was really inspirational to me. Well, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you came here. Yes. Yeah, it's a great city. I do love it. <laughs> okay, so now you were saying you've kind of switched career modes because you wanted to do things that are more fulfilling, so that leads me to my next question to tell us more about yourself personally. What are your passions? What lights you up? Hmm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> So I am, I think I am really one of these personal growth junkies. Mm -hmm. Like I, uh, the last 20 years of my life, I've just been on this never ending pursuit for new experiences that will uh, broaden my perspectives, uh, help me develop my particularly uh, interpersonal relationship skills. Uh, So sometimes that looks like uh, traveling. I really love to travel and meet new people new cultures. I love uh, any kind of new experience. Um, uh, I'm involved in several circles of people that that create these environments where we get to support each other doing deep uh, personal growth work together. Um, and the last couple of years, I've really dived into uh, finding ways to bring more connection into the world. Mm. I love to connect with people and I love supporting people uh, who want to have more connection. And so that's a big part of my life right now. And anyone who meets you sees that that's definitely a big mm. trait of yours, very mm. noticeable, very yeah. admirable. Mm. Well, that's a judgment, but it is, <laughs> but it is true, I think. Uh, people definitely tell me this a lot, that I'm definitely a very social, uh, connecting person. Uh, type person. And as for traveling, because I love to travel, and I haven't traveled since I've been in Austin for four years, but you just had an incredible adventure yeah. a couple months ago. Yeah, I got to take my dad and my two brothers to Spain and Paris. My dad is 89 years old. That's so cool. And he's still playing golf and traveling the world with me. Very happy. And then um, he flew home, and I spent six weeks going all around Europe by myself, and staying in hostels with a bunch of 20-year-olds. That's very cool. And it was so much fun, and uh, um, I think I'll be doing more of that. It's just really And is there any, like, uh, main thing that you would say from that trip that you learned? Mm. 
a personal reflection? Like, could it be just one thing? Or mm. Yeah, so, so one thing that was interesting is uh, um, when I was, I was going to these hostels, and they're typically youth hostels, <laughs> and uh, I am no longer in my 20s by a long, long shot. I'm, I'm pretty much semi-retired from my work. That'll give you an idea. And so I'm staying with all these young people, and what I found was that if I show up uh, really open and transparent and authentic, there's a lot, a lot of people out there that are just love that, are just craving connection, um, regardless of my age. And so that was just a, a real, uh, you know, um, sometimes I've had fear that uh, that people will judge me because I'm too old for their crowd or whatever. And this trip was a really great reminder that that's not necessarily the case. It's beautiful. Lead with your heart. Exactly. That's yep. wonderful. I love that. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. And let me see what else is on here. So as far as this four-week relationship workshop mm -hmm. we're teaching in October, it will be Tuesday evenings from 6.45 to 9.45, starting on August, uh, excuse me, October 15th, 22nd, 29th, and November 5th. I'll give it a plug at the end. But in regards to that, what inspired you to want to co-host that with me? Hmm. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of answers to this one. Uh, I have, I have uh, often thought about doing relationship type workshops. Um, I do life coaching, but it's usually one on one. And I, uh, I've, I've considered um, maybe doing couples work um, coaching as well or counseling. But when this came up, the thing that really hit me was um, the co-creative aspect of this like I'm really excited to work with you given all of your experience working with couples um, in co-creating a workshop where we get to do this together mm -hmm. I think I'm going to learn a ton and just you know for my own personal reasons I'm very excited now as far as the participants um, I love co-creation like I find that like uh, whether it's with romantic partners or business relationships or just friends where we're creating something together, I think it's just a way of having more impact in the world and having like a bit a bigger impact when I'm working with someone that um, I'm joining hands with them. And over the years, I feel like I've developed a lot of really gr really good skills around this and. Um, if you don't have good communication skills, the ability to really express each of your needs and work out something that works for both people and stay on the same page as you're moving forward, um, collaboration can be challenging. And so I've got quite a bit of experience and I'm hoping that that will help me bring some really good ideas and frameworks that we both can share with the participants so that they're better able to go out and create these collaborative relationships that they're looking to create. And this, you know, I think the focus of this is going to be in their romantic relationships, but these skills can be useful in all parts of their lives. All of it. I agree. So for me personally, my counseling started years ago, many years ago, 25 years ago or so, and I found in whatever area I was counseling, and many couples would come to me or individuals that were challenged in their relationship, and I found that the answer to all of it is just by when we strengthen ourselves and we get more clarity on what our own needs are and what we're looking for, specifically what we're looking for. Most people just keep pull, pulling in the same type of partner and then wondering why it's not working out because they don't reflect, they don't look at it deeply enough. So. 
as long as we have self-love and we learn tools and we learn more clarity about ourselves then through that love that mm -hmm. like total autonomy we will say hey now I'm ready to play with someone and the person that comes to you is going to be happening because they're going to have a clue to what they want instead of this like we just bumped into each other and the lighting was good and everything mm -hmm. the stars were in our favor so you need a lot more work than that happening and the thing about collaborating, I have had vision since my 20s, which was also a few decades ago, of always working, finding the perfect male counterpart. Because as balanced as I feel that I am in looking at situations, and I love working with men and women, and in, even in my school I had both male and female, and with clients for so many years, I love that, but to have a strong male such as yourself adding your perspective I think there's going to be such a harmony so I'm very excited about it and of course we're going to have our outline and our structure and I'm most waiting for when we see what type of people are drawn to signing up for this workshop that once I read their intake sheets and you and I kind of have our little powwow over that, then we're gonna really customize this specifically to their needs. So, so we have an idea what it's gonna be about. Uh, my specialty is process oriented and your specialty is bringing in fun and play mm -hmm. with process. So mm -hmm. they will appreciate <laughs> that coming in a little bit. I, I'm tend to getting a group that nobody speaks because they're just processing. Mm. And uh, mind you, lots of insights, and it's very valuable, but if we could do that with play, what a heavenly balance <laughs> that is going to be. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're going to learn a lot. I'm going to learn a lot. So it's like one of my goals is coming to a fruition here. Mm. Another goal. Okay, so now let's move on here a little bit. I wanted to ask you where you're coming from here. So what have you found as a healthy, attractive, hot male, mm. regardless of your age? Yes, I'm a little, uh, it, it's my opinion. What have you found to be some of the challenges in the dating world, relationship arena over the last couple decades or a few decades, however far back you want to go with that? Mm. Yeah, so, you know, people are out there in the dating world for a lot of different reasons. They're looking for all kinds of relationships. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that question with the, uh, with the audience in mind of people that are looking for um, a, a potential long-term partner. You know, whether they are interested in married or not, but someone that they could see being with for quite a long time and being very compatible with, where both of them are really gonna um, get their big needs met. So that's the context here, I think, that uh, I wanna speak to. And the challenges around that that I've found is that, number one, a lot of people out there are, don't seem to be that self-aware about what they're really uh, true needs are. Um, as you sort of mentioned, people um, sometimes just keep looking for the same thing and then discovering that's not really for them. So there's, there's a lot of work that people um, need to do to get clearer about what, what are the things that are really going to satisfy them and have them feel uh, loved, have them feel secure, have them feel like there's plenty of space in the relationship, both for connection um, and interdependence with their partner, as well as plenty of room for independence, where they have space and trust, where they can go off and have fun and do their own thing without feeling um, too uh, trapped in the relationship. So uh, the short answer there is self-knowledge. Yes. Right? And then the second thing is having the courage to express who they really are with others. Mm -hmm. So my experience is that in dating, um, people often try to put on um, their, their good face. Yes. And out of, uh, there's a lot of different reasons, but the big one is fear of other people rejecting them. Like if I shared 
all of myself with someone, the good and the bad, and uh, my, uh, my eccentricities or my <laughs> hobbies that not everyone may enjoy, um, that they're going to reject me. Mm-hmm. So I try, so it, it would be easy for me, and I see a lot of people doing this, they, they play this little game of trying to get the other person to reveal what it is they're looking for, and then once I have that information, I can, I can act like that for you mm-hmm. so that I can get uh, appreciation and maybe a second date, <laughs> yeah? And yes. we're off to the races. Yes. Yeah. And um, so that's, a, that's the biggest challenge, I think, is um, self-awareness and then people having the self-love and confidence to really share with other people early on who they really are and what they really are looking for. So you're saying that your challenge has been trying to find authentic people that have enough self-knowledge, self-awareness that they... And self-love, yeah, and self-love. confidence enough to say, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had an ex-husband once that I found it adorable in my 30s when he said, oh, I just love it when you take care of me and give me my vitamins and all that. And I was totally all about that. I'm like, isn't that the greatest thing, as nurturing as I am? Little did I know I would learn something very big from that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that if he can't take care of himself and take his own vitamins, mm. I was in for some lessons I interesting think. so interesting but it's fascinating how I was aware how I got hooked like I felt here's someone who totally loves me like I could he'll take everything I have to give and then yes to a point and then yes. move on a little further and then you yes. see but wait a minute how much do I want to give so now my thing my challenge is also that so when I meet someone yeah they got to be hot looking and there's got to be some juice there but then once we start talking I want to make certain that they do have that same authentic connection they have mm-hmm. some sense of themselves they know mm-hmm. how to like I want to know what do you do when you're stressed it's almost like mm-hmm. I'm interviewing them for a job like not go to happy hour and not drink too much, and which tends to be an Austin thing, but maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. Uh, but it's more that I want to know you have skills. Yes. And, and then anything that comes up. First off, I want to know you have skills and that you'll use skills in stressful times. That's what I look for mm-hmm. in relationship. If that's mm-hmm. not there, I, I am a meditator. I can mm-hmm. be alone, and I'm just as happy with me and my dogs and my hummingbirds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, so that's speaking to is a person happy on their own? Yes. Or do or do they? There are a lot of people who um, truly believe that they can't be happy on their own, and that they need another person to make them happy. Yeah. Like there's a miss, there's like a hole that another person is going to fill. And uh, the little story you just shared about uh, um, like it sounded like you really had a big need. To feel needed yes. in that way, yes. and you were looking for someone that would make you feel good about yourself yes. in that way. Yes, and so he just threw that little bait out, and you just took it. Yeah, it was. And so, um, uh, find a partner who can take care of themselves. Yes, and isn't it wonderful when we can give those people affirmation and love and support as a as an extra? Whenever yes. the opportunity arises. Yes. No. I mean, still, I'm not saying I don't want to nurture someone and no, be there for them. Not. But I want to make certain that if I am off working or I don't feel like doing something, that they know how to take care yeah, of exactly, themselves. Yeah. So that they're strong on their, on their, onto themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what else? So now we have, what have you found to be beneficial or easier as you mature? <clears throat> as your older 20-year-old self and cultivate more tools for relating to the opposite sex. So what, what is different now in your life that makes it easier than it was 20 years ago? Hmm. Yeah, so this gets to uh, some, some fairly specific skills that I've been on a journey in learning through uh, ups and downs and challenges and mistakes and so on. And um, uh, let me just share a few of them here. Um, So one of them is uh, developing the ability to really listen to another person, like like create a space where where the other person can share 
whatever's going on with them, their feelings, their, it could be negative feelings, their judgments, whatever's going on, and then be able to reflect that back to them so that they feel really seen and heard. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe most of us walk around feeling very lonely and in our own little world, and uh, having a partner who can really empathize with us is a really, really powerful skill. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, another one is um, um, really really understand myself and what my needs are and then to be able to express those with my partner in a way that they can really hear, like without judgments, without um, pushing them away, but just share what it is I'm really feeling and thinking and um, uh, so that um, without fear that I'm going to push them away. Yes. So often people will filter themselves because they feel like the other person can't handle it. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's uh, another part of this is to have the ability to create a space with your partner where we're in agreement that this is a safe place for us both to authentically share what's going on. Mm-hmm. And practice doing that and practice it so that we start building this trust that my partner can get angry with me, they can share judgments or fears, and I'm not going to run away. And uh, that's a really powerful skill to develop. It's a beautiful skill. Yes. And we're going to get into a lot of that in our workshop. Yeah, and and the last last thing I wanted to say, if you don't mind, is... um, I don't mind. Yeah. Um, There's actually two things. One of them is communicating around the balance that I want to give between giving attention to my relationship and my partner and the attention I want to give to my own stuff. That's a perfect Yeah, the, in, independ, the independence and the <laughs> interdependence and really being upfront about that and getting agreement on it instead of creating this world where uh, the, my partner wants more of my time and energy and we can't in like it's just resentment building up and I'm over here feeling pressured and vice versa. Yes. Like you want to avoid that whole world. And then the last thing I wanted to say is I am a big believer, and this this is this sometimes is a trigger for people, but I'm a believer that men and women are human beings first. We have a lot more that's similar about us than that's different. And I want to encourage people to come into relationships and drop all of the gender norm uh, social expectations. Men expect me as a woman to act this way or do these things, and women expect me as a man to show up and be this way, and all of that. Um, And again, some people, you know, uh, more traditional folks... uh, it's okay, you know, you don't have to buy into this. Um, but I found that the more me and my partner can focus on my real needs and my real desires and my real um, preferences outside of the world of what society expects me to have, mm-hmm. the more likely it is that I'm going to get my needs met and you're going to get your needs met. And to me, that's what it's about. It is what it's about. You, you just, you're very articulate. It's very beautiful. I mean, we think about our world and who actually taught us about relationship. Like we have our parents and we have our relatives and our friends and we look to see or we read articles or, shows, or social movies, media yeah. or something, mm-hmm. which is usually kind of ridiculous. And so, again, this is why when people, by the time they come to me and they're either ready to divorce or they're like, I'm never dating again because this is not happening. I just keep falling in the same hole. It's because we weren't taught these skills. So my passion in now with you joining ranks with me is to teach people these skills, these basic skills on what true relationship is. And it's always going to be relationship to ourself and then who's standing in front of us will reflect that. So mm-hmm. I'm yeah. excited. And I want to say this. I mean, the, the uh, listening skills, the, uh, the self-awareness skills, the communication skills, uh, the ability to set boundaries and negotiate those skills, these are not, um, these are not trivial to learn. 
they're 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 um, fairly challenging to learn and to do really well, and they can be learned. I have worked with many people that come in with really poor skills, but with some uh, uh, some practice, some uh, coaching, uh, uh, working with other people. I've seen people flourish and then develop into great managers, great team leaders, and great romantic partners. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm very optimistic. <laughs> it just takes the, the openness and willingness to go down that road. The change to acknowledge that yep. something needs to be tweaked here. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so this is just lovely. What else did I want to say? I want to say, with all of these skills of yours, what direction do you find yourself going career-wise in the near future? Like, do you have a, do you kind of see it evolving into something specific or? Hmm. Yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm kind of semi-retired around going for the big bucks, you know? <laughs> so I'm kind of free to do what I want. And I think um, in the near term, I'm going to, there's kind of two areas. One of them is I want to keep uh, delivering different kinds of uh, personal growth workshops and uh, the areas that these workshops are in is around communication, emotional intelligence, and I'm, I'm very excited about this around relationship workshops and as we've been talking about this and preparing for our workshop, I'm really excited about this and I think <laughs> this could be a big thing in my future. <laughs> like I'm just really excited and and then leadership workshops. So those are the kind of the areas that I'll be doing workshops in. And I've also, uh, I mentioned before how much I love creating connection, um, experiencing connection. I'm just starting this new thing and I'm calling mm -hmm. it uh, Connected Events. And what it is is for people that are going through some uh, life transition. It could be a birthday, could be they're moving to a different city, they're changing jobs, maybe, uh, maybe they're um, a, divorce. a divorce or they're having a baby, any kind of transition. And, you know, we already have these uh, sort of social ways of celebrating these things. We have a birthday party with cake and song and dance and, and all of these things typically we have some way of sharing these with the person going through the experience. But what I am bringing is the ability to work with the person to pull together their close friends and family and create an, an intimate experience where the person gets to share what's really going on with them, you know, what, what their struggles are, what their excitement is, how they could most use the support of their friends and family, mm -hmm. and like really get vulnerable together and have the, the group of people really connect and support that person and get to know each other as sort of this like new, deeper community. And I've done this a number of times and it always winds up with a lot more connection, a lot more excitement and energy between this group of people. And I feel totally fulfilled and bringing what I have to give. And so, uh, so I'm planning on doing that a lot more. And as you can tell, as I'm sharing it, I'm just really excited about it. And what's your website if they're interested in contacting you for that? Uh, it's called consciousconnections.com. And uh, that might change in the near future. So I'm getting ready to do kind of a revamp on my website. Okay. But that's what it is right nice. now. Yeah. I love it. You're the perfect person to facilitate such an honorable, where someone just feels like a star. That's a beautiful thing. I love it. Okay, so now this is the fun part. We're going to do a little mm. exercise. Okay. Just a little sample exercise. You're going to lead a little sample exercise. Some little question like, for instance, that workshop I was at with you in the in the park, mm -hmm. some of those mm -hmm. questions, how you just go back and forth just to give them an idea of how it works. Okay. I mean, we won't have to do it for like one minute, two minute, one minute, but any of those things. 
that come to mind just off the cuff? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, I forgive me, but I'm not really prepared oh, for this. Oh, because I thought that I put that in our notes. I got it. I got it. Uh, yeah, and I was uh, thinking you were going to lead it. But, uh, oh, I'm so but let's, sorry. But let's create something here. So okay. this would be around uh, relationships. So, so uh, one thing we might do when we get together just is like an icebreaker. So we do these kind of fun things where we, where we, uh, we go around and, and look in each other's eyes and introduce each other and maybe answer different kinds of interesting prompts. So when we're just talking normally, we kind of keep it su- kind of surfacy. Mm-hmm. But in our workshop, we're going to really get to know each other. Mm-hmm. So I might ask you something like, like, uh, what was an amazing experience you had in a prior romantic relationship? Like a specific situation? Yeah, just like when I say that, what comes up is like this amazing thing that happened between you and your partner? Mm-hmm. Taking a trip to France was mm. extraordinary. I wanted to go to France my whole life. The first time I went with my partner, it was spectacular. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So the prompt would be like, what was something between you and your partner, like some experience where you felt so connected with him and so happy with that person? Mm, I, I'm going to have to think on <laughs> Okay. Situation. Okay. All right. We can, and we can always, we can always pass. We can always pass. Okay, we'll uh, pass. It okay. was my dream being fulfilled being in France. It was very nice to have him ah. as joyous there. But it was one of my, someday I'll go to France, and it was the first time I went, and since so, I've been there many, many times. But I couldn't have been happier. Right. And he was right there with me. But he me. was sort of and, along for the ride. But he was bit. present and there and wine tasting with me, and he was laughable, and, you know, we played okay. and all that So you that got to wonderful. go do this wonderful thing, and you had your partner, and he was totally there with yes. you. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. And then we might go, I might go to a different person and ask them the same thing, and, and you might answer that in a totally different way with another yeah. person. Mm-hmm. And in that, you get to explore, like, haven't thought about this in years, but here in this moment together, we can all sort of get to know each other around what really lights us up in relationship, right? That's wonderful. And get to know each other. And if we wanted to, we could, you know, change the question. Like, we could, we could then say... You know, what is something that has been really frustrating? You name something that was really frustrating in a relationship. Only one? <laughs> just, just name one. Just name one, right. Could you do that for Probably me? Probably the lack of communication. Name one thing okay, that happened. Okay, so specifically, uh, an issue came up and I felt uh, an urgency to discuss it and get resolution and clarity on it. And at that point, Point, my partner was not he was very uh, not open to that and I understand that people cannot be open in the moment that the other person is ready but one of the skills that I will share is I feel better when someone says I'm not in the space right now and how about tomorrow morning or how about after work mm. or how about on Wednesday in two mm. days I can do this like give me something but when there's nothing there it's frustrating and again it was clarifying mm-hmm. to see that I was not in the right relationship because I even gave him skills I felt mm-hmm. like I was working overtime yes and then it was time yes to, um, I hear yeah. you. I hear you. Yeah. 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 So thank you for that. And then I might share a frustrating thing that I experienced. I was in a relationship for eight years and my partner, we would have dates and three fourths of the time she would show up late. Oh, that's okay. And I tried and tried and tried to tell her how important it was and how, uh, how I felt lack of respect of my own time and so on. And for, I never could change that dynamic and it was it was quite interesting how uh something so important to me i was unable to find a way to partner around it so very frustrating um yeah and isn't it wonderful those challenges help guide us and give us clarity sometimes Mm -hmm. we're not with the right partner Mm -hmm. that's right that's right yeah so that that's a little game we can play sometimes we'll ask three or four questions and kind of open up and get things going and as you can kind of see, it's sort of like uh, it can bring up some laughter and a little bit of like uh, a little bit of memories of how painful that was. And when you're in a group like our workshop's going to be, um, I guarantee 
you that the participants are going to feel pretty safe. You know, we're going to we're going to make it so people just go right up right to their edge, but they're not going to feel like they have to do anything. They can mm-hmm. just do whatever they feel safe to do. Yeah, that's beautiful. And uh, they'll learn more about themselves, learn other people, and uh, through this experience, we'll um, we'll just learn a lot. And back to my search since my 20s of finding the right male co-host is women will feel very safe with you. You're a very cultivated Mm. man. Mm. And yes, that's going to benefit. And for them to see that and for the men to see that too, for Mm. you to mirror that for them, it's beautiful. So yes, I love it. I love those exercises. Very good. I have so many. So one thing is for our workshop that I was talking about, uh, I did create some Evan Bright um, ads for that, but you could also go to Spa Luna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com, and it's on my website, but we are doing a freebie night, a little preview for two hours on September 17th, that Tuesday at 6.45 to 8.45, and that's free, and that's going to be in South Austin, so all that information is on my website, and if you need to contact me or text or email you're welcome to do that and yes because we're all we're holding it to 12 people i'm trying to make it 12 uh 12 total so it will be six men six women if it's couples that's fine uh if it's singles that's fine i'm i'm finding that this uh relationship workshop primarily we're calling it the relationship become your own relationship architect which i love that yes that's my idea and it's learning to design your own relationships. So again, it's going to be, we're going to, one of our first days uh, in the workshop, not in the freebie, is we're going to bring up a particular uh, challenge or something that was not resolved from a past relationship, and we're going to act it out in front of the group. So as much as that might seem vulnerable or uh, uncomfortable, you will find that in a group dynamic with, that's re- relatively small with 12 people and then David and myself, that you'll get so much insight that it gives you that detached perspective so that you can really uh, drop that and gain the lessons and move forward and have a giant opening and mm-hmm. romance and love is yours soon. So that's wonderful. So also, I'm hoping to get David back here to do a couple more podcasts so you can see uh, questions that we have. So any of you that have specific questions that you'd like us to discuss or bring up uh, in a podcast, you're welcome to, again, email me or that's Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A at spaluna.com or find me through the website and you know how to reach David now and... Yes, I love that. And David, is there anything else you would like to share before we close our mm. wonderful? Mm. Um, yeah, this has really been enjoyable uh, to talk with you, Samana. I'm really <laughs> excited about this workshop. Uh, I wanted to piggyback on something you mentioned. So um, we're designing this for individuals to come to the workshop to learn um, learn new skills so that uh, they'll be better able to um, design the relationships in their life that, that they most want, that will serve them the best. And so couples are welcome to come, um, but don't expect that we're going to have the couples uh, tied at the hip. The couples are going to be separated, and you'll do lots of interaction with other people. So yes. you'll show up as singles here learning your own, the things that each of you need to learn, independent of whatever y'all have experienced well said. as couples, right? Um, um, yeah, and we'll provide support. There will be opportunities for us to support you as a couple. I'm sure we can speak to questions and so on, but primarily... This will be a safe place for anyone, couples and singles, to come and develop these skills. Yes, and we're, we're going to have check-in time, and we're going to do some fun movement mm. in the beginning. It's not just all everybody sitting in a room and going for it. Right. We are going to do it in a creative way, so you will love this. Again, I've it, done It'll these. be a lot of fun, a lot of experiences, a lot of new learning. And, and uh, we'll, yeah. we'll uh, learn as we go some mm. of it. We'll see whatever is needed and meet it. That's the point of it. 
once you have the skills, we can create anything we want. So thank you for listening to us. I hope to hear any feedback from the audience out there and share this with a friend. I like that. Followers on Apple Podcast or Spotify. And thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you.